of Independence protest. Wilshkrum memorialized. And in sports, Jazz Chisholm in the playoff opener. The Bahamas denied the national report starts now. ZNS News is brought to you by the new BTC. Fiber is here. Faster, stronger, more reliable. Together, we are unstoppable. Switch today. everyone, I'm LaDawn Davis and this is The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. Thanks so much for tuning in. The government's ambitious legislative agenda outlined in the speech from the throne today as Parliament officially opened. Three pillars were identified as a central focus for the government moving forward. Carla Palmer has tonight's top story. In her first speech from the throne, Governor General Excellency, the most honorable Cynthia Pratt, noted that the government will continue to build on what's being described, a successful legislative framework since coming to office in 2021. Two years into its five-year term, her government, she says, will continue to rebuild a still recovering economy that boasts real gross domestic product growth at 14.4% and nominal growth by 9%. The focus now for the most part is introducing priority legislation, firstly promoting personal security through improved educational support and outcomes for young people, advancing improved health among residents, further assisting the elderly and disabled, and increasing job creation, not only in number, but type and quality. The result is that things are still too tough for far too many people, especially the poor amongst us. We remain determined to do what we can to make things better. A new unit will be formed to review notice of vacancy processes to ensure that Bahamians have a fair opportunity to apply for all available jobs that are created as our economy grows and diversifies. This legislative agenda is also investing fully in economic security, mainly through tourism, the country's largest source of employment. Improvements here will also see new legislation, like a downtown management authority, to oversee and enhance the revitalization of downtown Nassau. Implement the Family Island Airport Renaissance Project to accelerate airport development throughout the country and introduce a modernized public service reform bill. Building on the progress already made in achieving an historic number of union agreements, my government will implement the first public service-wide promotion exercise in nine years. Amendments to existing legislation will be proposed to prevent the current long-standing backlog of overdue promotions and reclassifications happening again. As for the last primary focus, this legislative session is that of national security. A national maritime instruction and a training bill will be instituted, a creative and performing arts school established. Legislation for the care and protection of older persons, the Bahamas National Development Plan Bill, a renewable energy bill, liquid natural gas bill, local government bill, urban renewal authority bill, national forest bill, legislation regulating cannabis and hemp, a national youth commission bill, and a national service bill. That will invite our young citizens to register for national service. The participants in this program will serve to meet the needs of our vulnerable communities throughout the Bahamas. With the speech from the throne having been read, parliamentarians now have their work cut out in executing the government's promised legislative agenda for the years ahead. From the House of Assembly, I'm Carla Palmer for The Bahamas Tonight. Thanks a lot, Carla. Members of the lower chamber were in session briefly this morning, but as Corville Pyrefum tells us, the focus in the House quickly shifted to honoring the former member of parliament for West Grand Bahama and Bimini and leader of government business, the Honorable Obi Wilshkum. 
It was not a flawless return to the lower chamber as members of the House were greeted with a malfunctioning AC. Not a situation you want when you're wearing a morning suit, gowns, and gloves. It's a hot day near 90 degrees. Windows were kept open and members and those in the gallery used whatever they could to find themselves to stay cool. Then proceedings got underway briefly. For a late start this morning, as we are without air conditioning, so bear with us this morning. West Grand Bahama and Bimini MP Obi Wolskum was at the forefront of this morning's proceedings. The parliamentarian who died suddenly last week had been the leader of government business here in the House. He was replaced today by Freetown MP Wayne Monroe with Pia Glover Roll, the Golden Gates MP, his deputy. Prime Minister Davis, in a sobering and significant move, asked that the place card of Mr. Wilscombe's be switched with Mr. Monroe's and that Mr. Wilscombe's place card be draped in black in memory of the fallen parliamentarian. Minister Wilscombe was a statesman and a bohemian ambassador at heart. His passion for advancing a modern Bahamas was well known during his many years as Minister of Tourism, where he championed the Bahamas internationally. As Minister of Social Services and Urban Development, he had a keen interest for the disabled and a desire to improve conditions in urban communities. Speaker Patricia DeVoe also offering condolences to Carmichael and P. Keith Bell on the recent passing of his wife. To you, my brother, we are with you. We have our full support. And we wish you and your family well as you go through this time of bereavement. The Speaker then reminding members of their responsibilities both to the Parliament and to those they serve. Let us approach this new session with a renewed sense of purpose. Our citizens look to us for leadership, for policies that improve their lives, and for a vision for a brighter future. It is incumbent upon us to rise above partisan divides and work collaboratively. Later in the day, it was announced that the House would stand in adjournment until October 18th at 10 a.m. It is expected to be an active and rigorous legislative session ahead for the lower chamber, with issues such as the environment, economic recovery, health care, and education expected to take center stage. In the House of Assembly, for the Bahamas tonight, I'm Corvell Pyfram. Thanks, Corvell. Well, with an aggressive legislative agenda now before them, Senate President Lachelle Adderley admonished senators to debate with respect and dignity all while following the rules of the upper chamber. We must strive to be the protectors of the highest standard that this chamber demands. Discipline in preparation and execution extols political maturity and inspires confidence, trust, and respect in the upper chamber. Our standard should never diminish, but remain a leading and luminous light in our parliamentary democracy. I once again underscore the importance of remaining relevant in your debate. Worrisome and uninspiring, just two of the words leader of the opposition Michael Pintard used to describe the government's newest plans revealed in the speech from the throne this morning. Flanked by members of his party at the Free National Movement St. Barnabas headquarters, Pintard accused the government of peddling recycled and repackaged ideas, alleging that more than half of the promises made in 2021 were not completed despite the newly set of agenda. What was amazingly absent was a strategy around how they would address out of control inflation and the struggles that small businesses have and their failure over the last two years to even find in their budget the $50 million they promised would address the issue of micro, small and medium sized business uh, development. What was also missing was any conversation about Grand Bahama and the challenges this economy faces. In this speech, the Governor General read that the government will complete construction of the new hospital in Grand Bahama and will also accelerate the construction of new and affordable homes on Abaco and Grand Bahama. Amidst all of the pomp and pageantry during the opening of Parliament, the Coalition for Independence attempted to put their concerns in the spotlight. Here's Jim Anita Swain. 
Lincoln Bain and members of the Coalition of Independents in Parliament earlier today raising a number of concerns during the opening. First, there were chants and, according to Bain, a commission of inquiry into Bell's conduct that never materialized. It would not be long before additional officers would be called to reinforce the barricades, asking the group to lower their signs. There's no law that says that I don't have the freedom to write something on a piece of paper and hold it up. What nonsense is this? What kind of country are we living in? We are here. They realize they cannot move us. They said they will not move us, but they're telling us we can't hold a placard over my dead body. And for those who would call the group troublemakers, he had this response. There never will be change unless you break some eggs to make your omelets. But we don't create problems. We always come in peace. For her part, Chief Superintendent Chrislyn Skippings and her team focused on maintaining order. She had words with Bain before providing this comment. I was speaking to him and just encouraging him to do things in decency and in order. There's a right way and there's a wrong way you do things. And so he lamented about some things way back in 1967. And I'm telling him, as a country, we're now 50 years of age. We ought to be doing things in decency and in order. At the end of the day, none of the demonstrators were arrested. Instead, police just maintained their position, not letting them move beyond the barricade. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Jiminita Swain. And still to come, we continue to reflect on the life and legacy of the late Obi Wilshkum. You're watching the Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. This portion of the news is brought to you by Full Call Smart Pass, the smart way to pay at the pump. has changed over the past 60 years. But at Commonwealth Bank, our mission to build lifelong relationships with our clients remains the same. Our customers are more than just a number. Our customers are our family. And together, we create banking solutions that fit your unique needs. Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. they were on sale, Monique couldn't resist things she didn't need. And neither did Bruno. Hungry for deals? You better come and satisfy that hunger for only $20 at KFC before doing something crazy. Get eight pieces of juicy, fresh, in-store prepared KFC fried chicken and hot golden fries for only $20. A finger licking good deal. My business couldn't survive without my credit card machine from Fidelity. It's fast, convenient, and my clients love it. My sales increase, and I can track my earnings. Get your credit card machine from Fidelity today. Call 356-7764. purchased a defective item and was denied an exchange or cash refund? Contact the Consumer Protection Commission at 393-7795-8 or our 24-hour complaints hotline at 357-7898 and let us help your voice be heard. Hey, get up, stand up. Stand up for your life. Health? 
is the greatest gift. That's where we come in. Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supplies is the premier distributor of medical equipment, as well as medical and surgical consumables. Our engineers are always on hand, providing top care service that saves lives. We carry a wide selection of over-the-counter and prescription items, IV fluids, and other injections. Our products are state-of-the-art, and our entire team stays on top of cutting-edge technology. With more than two decades of dedicated service, Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supplies continue to be a trendsetter and innovator in healthcare. We have set ourselves apart by truly caring for our customers. We understand the intricacies of healthcare and we produce spectacular results. We cherish our partnerships and nurture our friendships as we continue on our quest to help everyone maintain that wonderful gift of good health. Find us on 9th Fifth Terrace Centerville and now located in the Lucaya Shopping Center of Freeport, Grand Bahama. The domestic economy maintained its growth during the month of August as a recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic neared completion and the economic indicators returned closer to the expected medium-term trajectory. That's according to the Central Bank's monthly economic and financial development report for August. Ministry of Tourism data revealed that the total arrivals strengthened to 6.6 .6 million visitors for the year. For the month of August, stats show that a, a a rather a 0.74% increase in visitors to the country, sea passengers rose to 0.62 million and air traffic improved to 0.13 million, representing a 98% increase over the pre-pandemic numbers recorded in 2019. Additionally, Family Island arrivals also rose to 0.32 million. It's just weeks away before leaders gather in Dubai for COP28. These high-level discussions will focus on climate change and its impact primarily on small island developing states like the Bahamas. Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis has been working assiduously to gain support from regional leaders and to show the world that there's strength in numbers. Well, I'm feeling great. Uh, the Nassau Accord was adopted um, yesterday in respect to how we address the gap in climate financing. Um, we hope to take that as a hemispheric, um, as a hemispheric uh, position from the OAS. Last week in Grenada, we came up with a, a Grenada Accord to speak about the efforts that's required to ensure that small island developing states like ours um, would be um, um, would be um, able to adapt and mitigate against the climate change. The Prime Minister is seriously questioning the level of commitment by larger industrialized nations towards the climate change effort. The last week in Grenada, that during the course of that same very week, resilience, there's some question as to the true commitment of the industrialized world. So, for example, the aim is to reduce the carbon footprint. But are you doing that when, for example, the United States has, has just commissioned a, or gave permission for a new oil refinery to produce about 369,000 barrels of oil a day? Um, is, does, that, does that engender any uh, confidence that we are really on the right path? England last Thursday gave permission for one of the largest oil fields in India, I think it's a boat camp oil field, to be um, open and produced. So those are, those are indicators that don't truly give confidence that we'll be able to build resiliently if we are not at the same time taking initiatives to lower our carbon footprint. It's been more than a week now since former cabinet minister and parliamentarian the late Obi Wilshkamp passed away. Officials of his beloved Progressive Liberal Party, which Wilshkamp has been a part of since his youth, assembled at their Farrington Road headquarters last evening to reminisce on the significant contributions he made. Here's Lloyd Allen. PLP supporters, along with family and friends of the late the Honorable Obadiah Wilchcombe, on Tuesday gathered at the Progressive Liberal Party's Farrington Road headquarters to pay tribute and eulogize the fallen cabinet minister. 
a heartfelt tribute given by Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis for his determination in advancing legislation as leader of government business in the House of Assembly. Above all, the Prime Minister referred to Wilchcombe as a friend. Let us honor Bobby's legacy by ensuring that every decision we make is anchored in the heartbeats of the Bahamian people. Obi wasn't just talking politics, he was laying out a roadmap of compassion, duty and responsibility. For Obi, it wasn't just about politics, it was about heart. The PM says over his career, Wilchcombe embodied the values of the PLP to always put people first. He was truly one of a kind. A giant in the realms of journalism, politics, public service, and above all, in the hearts of all those fortunate enough to know him. Goodbye, my friend. As you journey forward, may the angels guide your path, and may you find eternal peace. And may we, left behind, honor your legacy by continuing the good work you started with the same dedication and passion that you showed us every day. Also sharing was education minister and colleague, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, who says she met Wilshcombe in high school and was one of the first people to recognize Wilshcombe's leadership skills and tenacity. His love manifested a remarkable fidelity to the philosophical tenets of our party. On a more personal level, his, for those of us who knew him, his friendship, his camaraderie, his humor, and frequent self-deprecation and his love for so many of us in this hall, in this hall, and all across our beautiful nation, made our lives so much more enjoyable. A number of tributes also went from other colleagues and friends of Wilchcombe from the political realm. His tenacity, energy, and ability to leap over all the tall hurdles amidst his political and personal disappointments, despite being a relatively short man in stature, let him to never ever being deterred in his belief in this great PLP and its philosophy of wiping the tear from every eye. As the member of parliament, it is such a profound honor to be able to say that I have worked with one of the finest political orators and personalities our nation has ever known. Now, according to the Prime Minister, the final farewell service for the late, the Honorable Obadiah Hercules Wilchcombe is set for October 12th at 12 noon at Christchurch Cathedral. Reporting from the PLP headquarters, Farrington Road, for the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Lloyd Allen. Surreal is one of the words used by two of the daughters of the late cabinet minister and parliamentarian Obi Wilchcombe to describe their father's sudden death. Altavis Munnings shares their story. The politics side of it, he never brought it home. When it came to us, it was just us. Obi Cheryl, affectionately known as Peter, reveled in her father's undying love, even though he was one of the country's most seasoned politicians and loved by all. That's why her father's untimely death still seems so unreal. Pictures start coming over my phone, and it was at that moment I fell to the ground. I was like, don't tell me this happening. Somebody explain something to me. And so my only mission was to get to the airport with my siblings and get to Freeport because I needed answers. With a lifetime of memories, Peter reminisced on what she describes as her best moment with her father in her entire life. It was at her wedding earlier this year. When I came around the bend and I saw my dad walking towards me, I can't describe how I felt, but I know everybody could have seen and they noticed. And when he took my hand, he said, you're beautiful, don't worry about nothing, let's go. And he said, take your time. And that entire moment, I just wanted to rest in it, even down to the father and daughter dance where he held me. And he encouraged me, and even in his speech where he, 
He said, you're going to be a good wife. He, he encouraged me to be the best that I could be at all times. So he still him saying, well, you know, saying old stories because he loves to tell old stories. As the baby of the group, Adia cherishes every moment she spent with her father. She had just returned to work from vacation on the day she learned that her father, Obi Wolshkam, passed away in Grand Bahama. Some people who didn't know was just already sending the condolences, and I'm like, what do you mean condolences? And it still was not real. And when I talked to my sister again, and I heard enough voice, and I was like, yeah. So our next mission was to, to go to Freeport. And during their last telephone conversation, Adia was hoping to pencil in a time to introduce her father to his new granddaughter. So I called him, I say, hey, daddy. He said, hey. He said, man, I gotta get a new daughter, because you don't chat. I said, I said, daddy, I said, you always busy. I said, I waiting on you um, to pick a date so I could come and bring the kids. So, like, to know that's the last conversation I had, I'm like, but I just talked to him, like, what you mean? The Senate began its new session Wednesday morning with its president, Lachelle Adderley, offering condolences to the family of former senator and cabinet minister, the Honorable Obi Wilshkum, who died suddenly last Monday. Adderley says a former journalist and politician was an example of what one could accomplish. The nation has lost a highly favored son who left behind a brand of politics and convictions that connected and interwove the quiet revolution, majority rule, the Salindan Pinland political era, and this present era. Minister Wilshkums consistently believed in Bahamianization and Bahamians, especially if you were from West End and Bimini. He firmly believed that our tenacious and unique past should undergird each generation towards one love, a progressive future with economic empowerment, business opportunities, social upliftment, alongside a stable and well-protected democracy. Marcellus Hall joins us in studio with a check on what's coming up in sports. Marcellus? Coming up in sports for this evening, Fast Pitch Softball returns. We'll tell you all the details just ahead in sports. Well, I don't call it work. I call it an experience, and it's nice. I love it. I never left the island to go nowhere week because I enjoy taking people out on tours and having the experience with them. What makes Long Island unique is we have a nice culture. We have beautiful uh, beaches, beautiful land. We are quiet, peaceful. I give um, the echo tours, uh, snorkeling, deep sea fishing, sightseeing and excursions to Georgetown. My tours are special because of the beautiful waters, fishing, and also the um, excursions down through the snakes. Like the expression on people's face when they get to the opening of Kong Point, everyone mouth drops open. Been around the world, they say, but they never seen nothing as beautiful as through the snakes. Walk into any Super Value and Quality Supermarkets location and walk out with great savings like Libby Spaghetti and Meatballs, 15 ounce, 149. Rainbow Corn Beef, 12 ounce, 239. Amalanda Milk, one liter, two for 250. Center Cut Pork Chops, Two sixty-nine per pound. Iceberg lettuce, one ninety-nine each. Donate your change to help feed the main society animals at Super Value and Quality Supermarkets. You can find it all at Builders Mall.
from cement, lumber, block, plumbing, and electrical to paint, lights, vanities, and tiles. Not to mention all the tools you could possibly need to get the job done. If you're starting a major project, adding the finishing touches, or just doing some repair or rental work around the house, FYP, the Paint Center and Tile King can help. Stop by or call 601-8453. Located 69 Wolf Road, Nassau. You can find it all at Builder Small. Building, painting, and tiling. The Bahamas. Sometimes, life hints at your next step. Sending you signs all around. Even in unexpected places. To lead you in the right direction. The signs are clear. It's time to pay less for your current mortgage and switch to Scotiabank. Enjoy lower interest rates and no payments up to two months when you switch your mortgage to Scotiabank. Plus, we'll even pay your switch costs. Paying less gives you more when you switch to Scotiabank. Health is the greatest gift. That's where we come in. Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supplies is a premier distributor of medical equipment as well as medical and surgical consumables. Our engineers are always on hand, providing top care service that saves lives. We carry a wide selection of over-the-counter and prescription items, IV fluids, and other injections. Our products are state-of-the-art, and our entire team stays on top of cutting-edge technology. With more than two decades of dedicated service, Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supplies continue to be a trendsetter and innovator in healthcare. We have set ourselves apart by truly caring for our customers. We understand the intricacies of healthcare and we produce spectacular results. We cherish our partnerships and nurture our friendships as we continue on our quest to help everyone maintain that wonderful gift of good health. Find us on 9th Fifth Terrace Centerville and now located in the Lucaya Shopping Center of Freeport, Grand Bahama. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station. Open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount, and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. To retain nurses who for years have been leaving the country for better opportunities abroad have been beefed up. Managing Director of the Public Hospitals Authority, Arbonette Roll, is hoping a series of seminars and surveys will get to the root cause of this problem. Trying to find out from the nurses, and in particular, what we call the novice nurse. Uh, so we're now um, getting ready to do a survey that speaks to facilitators and barriers to the retention of the novice nurse first, so that we can get an appreciation of really what's happening directly from those nurses. The minister recently joined other spouses around the world as part of the United Nations International Day of Peace Observ Observances in New York City. Mrs. Davis recently told Corvell Pyfram about the experience she shared with the international community. September 21st, marking a big day with an equally big honor for wife of the Prime Minister, Mrs. Anne Marie Davis. Mrs. Davis was in New York City and participated in observations marking the UN's International Day of Peace, even getting the chance to ring the famous peace bell. I'm boasting now number 518 out of the 6 billion people in the world to have rung the peace bell. International Day of Peace is a day devoted to strengthening the ideals of peace, observing 24 hours of nonviolence and ceasefire, and achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The peace bell has become a symbolic part of International Day of Peace, marking one of only two times yearly the bell is rung, the other occasion being the vernal equinox, or the first day of spring. Mrs. Davis calling it a profound moment. We cannot have peace unless we end the child abuse that's going on, the, the domestic violence. Uh, we cannot have peace without fixing what needs to be fixed because people will be angry. Mrs. Davis says she was delighted to share with UN officials the work the Bahamas has done and continues doing in these areas. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Corvell Pyfram. 
The Bahamas Crisis Center organizing an open conversation intended to aid in the mental recovery of victims of sexual abuse. Among those taking part, spouse of the Prime Minister, Anne-Marie Davis. I think it's so, so important that we continue to break the silence, to speak up, speak out, uh, say what we went through, uh, remove the stigma, stop victim blaming. Uh, all these are very important because victim blaming makes you live in shame for a long time. Um, you, you put a stigma on yourself, people put a stigma on you, you're afraid to come out. And, um, but once you face what happened to you, it's the beginning of your inner healing. A number of victims share their stories with the intent to inspire others undergoing similar challenges. I wrote, I, I began to write a book. I wrote down everything that happened. And in 2016, I wrote the book. When my grandmother saw the book and she saw my face on the book, she talked to me so bad. She said, Linnell, why you put your face on this book? Now everybody can know you were raped. I faced him, I confronted him like a man his age. Whereas, that was no hope for me. He grabbed me by my little slingy arms and threw me against the wall and said, oh, you want to be a man? This is what I have for you. That behavior grew in me, grew a tantrum of, of violence. I stabbed him multiple times. The Nassau Music Society announcing plans to feature Bahamian now in the process of receiving a doctoral degree in music as part of its ongoing series. With more insight, here's artistic director and professor of music at the University of the Bahamas, Christine Gagel-Horf. We're really using our season to get a lot of Bahamian talent showcasing. So we're excited to bring someone from abroad who's Bahamian coming, bringing her back home to perform for us. We have Bahamian clarinetist Alexandra Shea. And so she's originally here from here in the Bahamas. She went to QC and now she's studying for her doctoral degree at the Arizona State University. She's here with her clarinet partner, partner Dare Miller, and they'll be performing clarinet duos with our Dr. Joe. Dr. Paul Jones from the University of the Bahamas. Featured artist 25-year-old Alexandra Shea says she's been playing the clarinet for years and is excited about her future career. Honestly, it's part of me. As cliche as that sounds, like I really just emote through my clarinet and that's just whatever I feel comes out through this piece of wood. I am a professional clarinetist and the reason why I decided to become one is because I really like the idea of giving back and teaching others what I've learned abroad and coming back home to give them that knowledge that I was fortunate to gain. In case you missed the news or want to stay ahead, subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on X, TikTok, Instagram or Facebook. What's a sand dollar rebate? It's the digital Bahamian dollar back in your wallet. Top up any sand dollar enabled digital wallet and make a purchase of $50 or more in sand dollars at Super Value, Quality Supermarkets, Solomon's, Solomon's Fresh Market, or Sawyer's Fresh Market. Get up to $25 back when you redeem your rebate online between September 15th and October 15th at sanddollar.bs slash rebate. Rules and restrictions apply.
to them. Rise in concert. Rise. In the face of fears that a number of students who took ill at the Huntley Christie High, High School in Nicholstown Andros just over two weeks ago could have had dengue fever or possibly COVID-19. Sadness News was informed of an outbreak at the Family Island School and later contacted Minister of Health and Wellness, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darville, who confirmed that nine students were battling upper respiratory tract infections with similar symptoms similar to dengue fever. However, Dr. Darville confirmed ahead of cabinet on Tuesday that dengue was ruled out and the real illness has yet to be determined. The cases that were in North Andros, uh, we took a large cross-section of samples. We didn't find dengue, we did not find COVID, we found uh, uh, one of the flu viruses that was associated with that outbreak at the school and that is something that we want to uh, notify the general public, particularly at our schools. If your child has runny nose and not well and so forth, the child should be assessed at the clinic and then we'll make a determination because you know these viral illnesses coming out of COVID without masks uh, can easily spread in closed places. Uh, but I'm pleased to report that our deep investigation into those cases and samples confirmed that it was an upper respiratory tract infection of a viral phenomenon and not COVID and dengue. Don't go anywhere. Sports is up next. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, The National Report. Are you or a loved one under medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Ports International is the largest home health care supplier. Medical supplies at the very best price. And you can even shop online. From hospital beds to wound care, wheelchairs to walkers, Ports is a one-stop shop for your medical supplies and we accept insurance. We have online shopping and two locations to serve you at the Airport Industrial Park and Shirley Street. We also ship to the Family Islands. Shop online and visit us on Facebook. Call Ports at 377-1771. Join up for life insurance. Secure the ones that you love. Join up with Family Guardian. We offer full protection. Join the family. Join the family. Walk into any Super Value and Quality Supermarkets location and walk out with great savings like Libby Spaghetti and Meatballs, 15 ounce, 149. Rainbow Corn Beef, 12 ounce, 239. Amalanda Milk, 1 liter, 2 for 250. Center Cut Pork Chops, 269 per pound. Iceberg Lettuce, 199 each. Donate your chains to help feed the main society animals at Super Value and Quality Supermarkets. This is ZNS Total Sports. Welcome to your ZNS Total Sports Check, everybody. I'm Marcella Saul. Well, ever since the Bahamas Games, fast pitch softball fans have been waiting for more action to take place right here at home. Wish granted. That's because tomorrow, fast pitch softball once again taking center stage at the Blue Hills playing fields. Charles Fisher has more. Softball fans, you're in for a treat this weekend with the Thomas Sayers and Softball 242. Hosting of the ladies, one Caribbean women's fast pitch invitational at the Bankers Blue Hills Field. Basically, the tournament is geared towards encouraging inter regional play. Mm -hmm. Competition, I believe, will be encouraging. Um, you know, um, we haven't had um, fast pitch softball. So, getting softball back up is basically the primary focus, but in terms of a big old fan of sport, softball need to get back. Teams in from the US Virgin Islands and Jamaica to swing against local select squads. Uh, right now we're looking at uh, six teams, um, two out of Jamaica, uh, Club Fusion, Lady, uh, the Warrior Queens, the one, one out of USVI, and then three local teams. Uh, Sunshine of the Wildcats, 
uh, bomb operators and the University of Bahamas, Mingos. For us locally, um, we would wish to know, I would like to believe that the teams would want to know where they stack up within the region. And once you bring in that outside flavor, then the players here, if they find themselves falling short, then they know where they need to go and how they need to go up to get to that Calvert region. First pitch is Thursday with two games starting at 7 o'clock. Play will continue on Friday and Saturday with the championships on Sunday. Round Robin format. Tournament technical director is Burkett Dorset. We were just down to a tournament, the ECAS uh, qualifier in uh, US Virgin Island early this year. And some of these players that are coming on these three teams are actually played in that tournament. Um, we expect the US Virgin Island team to be an extremely strong team in this tournament, even though it's uh, uh, for a short period of time, it's a four day tournament and maximum of six teams. So you're looking at playing uh, 15 games, uh, 17 games in total, including the, the championship. Softball 2 for 2 this weekend. Get ready. For Zedna Toll Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. All right, thanks, Fisher. Meanwhile, over to baseball, Jazz Chisholm and the Miami Marlins beginning postseason play in the wild card round against the Phillies yesterday. Game one of that series, Jazz batting cleanup would have a rough day at the plate. He went 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. Phillies took the lead early with a run in the bottom of the third. They would add two more in the fourth and then another in the eighth inning. Mars would only score in the top of the seventh. Phillies going to win it 4-1. to one. Jazz and the Marlins now facing a must-win situation this evening. The two teams squaring off again tonight. Empire Fitness Gym and the Fitness Connection teaming up to host a powerlifting competition this weekend. The event is open to the members and non-members of the gym and will feature the squat, bench press, and deadlifts in the various weight classes. The event starting at noon on Saturday at Empire Fitness. Organizers saying that the international standards will be enforced for this one. So we're going to be following the international criteria from the uh, International Powerlifting uh, Federation. Uh, for those, for the three lifts, bench press, deadlift, and uh, squat. Mm -hmm. So for the squat, for example, you want to make sure that the quads are parallel to the ground. Uh, for the deadlift, you want to make the, make sure that the bar travels in the right direction. And uh, also for the bench, for example, you want to make sure that the bar touches the chest. And we're going to review all of this before the event. And that's it to check on sports for you here on this Wednesday. Don't go anywhere. We do have that Wednesday weather coming up right after this. This is ZNS Total Sports. We are New Life Natural Company Limited, and we have actually been in the community for now 13 years, serving in the health field. Our diets is probably one of the most poorest diets actually in the Caribbean, and we are really low in the world. As a result of our diet, we are actually inheriting all of these different diseases. So we need to kind of like shift the way how we eat and shift it to eating more healthier food. So we at New Life here, we are trying to change the paradigms. We are actually introducing tasty, healthy options. And so hopefully this SBDC initiative will actually create the awareness, help us to have an understanding of what we are doing, why we are doing it, and help us to begin to shift this paradigm of proper eating, proper dieting, and proper fitness. So our motto is eat well, be well, and let your food be your medicine. For more information about the Fitness and Wellness Initiative, contact the SBDC at 461-7232. First we plan, then we innovate, then we build. At Bahamas Striping Group of Companies, we are committed to quality, to safety, and to service. We know that the road you take is just as important as your final destination. At Bahamas Striping Group of Companies, it is our job to make sure the road and the ride are as smooth as possible. From striping roads to building them, we are the right choice, the trusted choice, the only choice to help you build your tomorrow.
Hey, it's your honorary pump attendant back again with another episode on the do's and don'ts at a service station. Let's go. What you ain't gonna do is just pull up to any dispenser and put the nozzle inside your car without reading the signs. Because if you put the wrong fuel inside your car and the car mess up, you could be mad at us, all right? And then you have to walk a catch bus for about three to 18 months. What you're supposed to do is read the signs. We place signs all over the dispenser to tell you which fuel is which. Because you put the wrong one in the car, say bop, and you could be mad at us. You could be, oh, oh, what happened to my car? No, it's you who ain't read. It's a diesel. Diesel. One word. Diesel. You got to up, 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 and you might Read, that's all you have to do. Time now for weather. In our final look at weather, we have partly cloudy skies, temperature 82 degrees, a relative humidity at 76%. East northeast winds at 4 miles per hour, the barometric pressure 1,011.3 millibars, it's 29.86 inches, and the temperature is steady. Temperatures around the family valleys this evening, they are brought to you by Family Garden Insurance Company, where protect you. 79 degrees in Freeport, Grand Bahama, Green Tulkey, and Marshall Barbaco, the Berry Islands, 82, Alistair Bimini at 84 degrees. 82 in Harbor Island, Rockstown, Elutra, 82, 82 in Black Point, Exuma, Camp Space on Andros, and Fresh Creek in Central Andros. Alderstown, Cat Island, San Salvador, and uh, Room Key, 80 degrees, 82 in Georgetown, Exuma, 80s in Ragged Island, Clarenstown, Long Island, Crooked Island, Betsy Bay, Acklands, and Matthew Tidy, Nagua, Texas, Texas Island, at 84 degrees. And your boating forecast tonight is brought to you by Builders Mall, home of FYP, the Tile King, and the Paint Center. For all areas tonight through tomorrow, those winds are going to be northeast to east at 10 to 15 knots, wave highs 2 to 4 feet. High tide occurs at 42 minutes past midnight. You can expect your low tide at 647 tomorrow morning. And then on Friday, for all areas, the winds will fall off light and variable with flat seas. They're going to be 1 to 3 feet instead of that 3 to 6. Low tide taking place at 746 in the morning, high tide at 1218 in the afternoon. That's going to do it for your boating forecast. It's time now for your international temperatures and they are brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. <laughs> for your international temperatures brought to you by Royal Star Shores. Now we take you to the tropics and we have Philippe now about 295 miles north of St. Thomas. It's uh, moving now towards the north at 12 miles per hour. Maximum sustainment barely tropical storm status at 40 miles per hour and we don't anticipate much change in those intensity over the next uh, several days. Say for once we get into the weekend and the early part of next week, there could be a slight uptick in terms of its intensity. Satellite pictures showing that front boundary now across the central Bahamas, so that should lead to some clearing over most of the northwest parts of the country uh, tonight. Tonight we're looking at partly cloudy, a bit on the warm side with your low temperature at 79 degrees. And tomorrow, partial sunshine with a couple of thunderstorms, particularly near that front boundary. High temperature tomorrow, 85 degrees. And the extended weather forecast, so what's going to be improving as we head into the weekend, the early part of next week. And uh, once again, it seems as though we'll hold those temperatures just slightly below tonight. 90 degree mark in the daytime. Thanks a lot, Basil. And finally, in news, the Davis administration has many young Bahamians under 35 holding key positions. Today's opening of Parliament was no exception. Devontae Hanna spoke with two millennials on their roles in today's ceremony. As the pages turn to open a new legislative agenda for the country, help steering government in the right direction, is a group of millennials working to ensure that those 35 and under have a voice when it matters most. One such person leading the charge is Senator Barry Griffin, the youngest Bahamian to be appointed to the Senate, who himself had a hand in creating the speech from the throne. I think the priority um, that the government has for the next through few years of our administration, I think it speaks to the heart of the transfer 
transformation that young people are hoping. The Davis administration was elected in September 2021 with the ambitious goal to transform the Bahamas, making it more sustainable and self-sufficient. And with several bills still left on the table, Griffin reveals one of the highly anticipated bills will return to the House floor. The government intends to tackle the issue of marijuana. So that's something we have in our blueprint for change. It's something that the Attorney General has been working tirelessly on. Um, the public would have already seen the draft bills in the public domain. And so I think that's one thing we can see be addressed. Aside from the long-awaited speech presented by the Governor General, many had their eyes glued to their TV screens to watch parliamentary procedure. And even in that, a millennial took the lead in the person of 35-year-old Rashad Flowers, the black rod of the Senate. It means a lot for me, especially as a younger person. This role would have normally been served by a much more older person or a much more experienced person, but I was given the opportunity. And it means a lot because it's very important on a day such as this, it makes sure that all of the activities for the opening remain in order and occurs on a timely basis. And with the apparent changing of the guard and government, those now taking the mantle, like Griffin, say they're more than elated to be in the positions they now hold. I mean, for me, I think these are one of those once-in-a-lifetime opportunities, so I'm not sure the novelty will sort of ever um, wear off. Um, so it continues to be an honor and a privilege to serve in, in this capacity. Um, but I would say over the past two years, I've learned um, a tremendous amount just on the job learning, met so many people, and have been able to accomplish so much. So I'm proud of the work that I've done as Vice President of the Senate, proud of the work that Parliament as a whole has done. Today, as Parliament reopened, the Bahamas can boast of having 60% of its representatives in the House of Assembly as first-time parliamentarians. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Devonte Anna. Thanks, Devante. And just before we go, we'd like to send out a very special happy belated birthday to our very own Aiken Barr. Happy birthday, Aiken. And that does it for the Bahamas tonight, the National Report. For all of us here at ZNS, I'm LaDawn Davis. Make it a great evening, everyone.